hello 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 welcome to my channel if this is your first time of clicking on my video you are welcome if you've been watching my videos well that means you know me already you know me very well thank you for always coming back um today i just want to talk about um waiting on god hmm. a lot of people don't have the patience you see um god almighty <laughs> when god wants to do something for you it's not that time that you want it you want it now 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 mm -mm. that's not the way god god works a lot of people are waiting on god a lot of people are praying and they are saying oh i've been praying about this it's not happening i've been praying about that it's not happening yes there might be so many uh, reasons why it's not happening sometimes it's the way you are putting the matter out to god sometimes you really have to wait that's the way god does because waiting on god has four seasons you see it has four seasons the first one is prayer and talking to god and having a chat with god that's the first one that's why i always say when you hand over issues to god leave it don't visit that anymore don't think about it anymore because you've talked to god you've had a chat with god you've handed over everything to god so the next season is the waiting time you must have patience you must have patience because with god you need patience because when god gives you whatever it is you want god does not sit on your neck to ask you for something in return no god does everything for you just free nothing to give him in return you see and the only thing god will ask of you is the fourth season i'm going to mention it so the second season is the waiting season patience patience whatever it is you want from god you need patience and the third one is harvesting when everything comes when you bear the fruit of your labor you bear the fruit of all the everything you've been telling god to do for you and now it's here that's when you harvest everything you see it's just like a farmer who goes he prepares the land that he's going to plant on first of all they prepare the land they remove all the weeds and they use their hoe or whatever to prepare the land then this the the second step they take is the planting season. They go around, they plant stuff into the land they've prepared. And the last one is harvesting. And after harvesting, what next? Gratitude. You see? So those are the four seasons. Four. You pray, talk to God, have a chat with God, whatever it is you want to call it. Then the second one is the waiting time. You wait. It might be the next minute, it might be the next second, it might be the next year, next days. In the spirit world, there's no timeline. So it will just come. Then the third one is when you have it, harvesting. You have all these things that God promised you, God has done it. What next you do do? You should be grateful. You see, you should be grateful. So that's what I really want to talk about here. There's a time for everything when it comes to God. If you go, open the Bible, open Ecclesiastes, yeah, Ecclesiastes 3, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and read from verse 1 to verse 3, and you will see what God says about this whole waiting season. The way God works is there. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 to 3. Then you now jump to verse 11 and see what God says there. So that is it. You have to wait on God. Be patient. God, God hears everything. God hears everything. But do you know that when you are asking your parents for something or maybe you are a parent and your child is always asking you for the same thing. The same thing he has told you about. You get irritated. You shout on him, what is it? You've been talking about this same thing 
all this while. I'm not deaf. I heard you. I'm making plans to get it for you. You see, and if if you are a child and you to you keep saying this to your to your parent, all oh, this this that, you know that's the reaction you get from your parent. What is this? Stop it! I heard you the first time. I'm working on it. It's the same thing with God. When you keep repeating, repeating, repeating about just this same thing. What do you want? How do you want God to feel? Remember that before you even said it to God, God knows already. Before you even say, God, this is the, 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 the issue at hand. God knows already. So when you mention it once, you pray about it once, or you chat with God about it once, or you talk to God about it, let it go. Keep it aside and put in your clothes of patience. Wear your clothes of patience. You see? Wear your clothes of patience and wait. And like I always say, sometimes the harvesting might not come on time. And why won't it come on time? Because you are not listening. You are not listening. You've talked to God about everything. You are waiting. While you are waiting, listen. The answers will come. What you have to do for that harvest to, to, be, to be fruitful. Excuse me. You know what it is excuse me you see while you are waiting just listen in your mind there are you, you that's why i say about knowing how to filter your mind you should know how to filter your mind you need to know which one is message from god which one you see it might be somebody saying something around you you don't really know that person Maybe you are passing, you just hear somebody talking on the phone. There are clues. Or you just hear, you just anything on the billboard. There must be something on the billboard that is sending you on the right path. So you need to be aware of your environment. I'm not saying go about every day listening to people's conversation. I'm not saying go about every day looking at billboards. It will just happen without you even looking for it. You see? Without you even knowing, people are having their discussion. You will just hear something. You are not listening to their conversation. But something will just, you, you, you know, come into that. You will just hear something they said and it will just click. Yes, that is it. You see? That is it. That is it. You might be driving on or you are on the bus or you're on the train and you just go past a billboard. You were not looking at the billboard, but your eyes will just be forced there, boom, like that. And you will see something that will put you on the right path. That's the way it is. Somebody might be reading a newspaper, holding the newspaper like this right uh, 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 in front of you, sitting, holding, reading, and your eyes... Your eyes will just flash on something on, on that page that is right in front of you. And it's a clue. You see, there are clues everywhere without you searching for it. It's just for you to have patience. <clears throat> Excuse me. Have patience. Be aware of your environment. A lot of people are not. When you see people <clears throat> everywhere, you go to the train station, you get on the bus, you... <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, I need some water. <clears throat> you just see everybody pressing their phone. Everybody's on the phone with their faces down like this on the square. Why are you on the square if you're there to press your phone? You go to the park where somebody's supposed to be happy, looking at nature, you know. Instead of looking at nature and being happy, they are there pressing their phones. And those people even brought their children to play. They are not playing with their children there. The children are busy running around. And they are busy pressing their phones. How are you going to know what to do if you are busy with your face down? You are engulfed on your phone. So how are you going to know what's the clue? For you to know what the clue is, you have to be aware of your environment. You have to be aware of, of where you are, what, what's going on around you. You see? People on the train, pressing, pressing, pressing. They don't even know. They don't see what's going on in there. It's just their phones 
their laptops. That's all. This is not right. It's not right. So you need to be aware of your environment. I'm not saying sit there and start looking around like this. No. When there is a clue, an angel will always direct your eyes to it. Believe what M. Rose is telling you. I know this. <laughs> I know this. I am not a pastor. I am not a deaconess. I am not a prophetess. But I know. You see, I know that God talks to us. I know that our guardian angels are always there to put, to put us on the right direction. I know that our spirit guide is always around waiting for you to, 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 to tell him what you want. Waiting for, to direct you. Okay, if your spirit guide is there with you and your spirit guide is directing you to the left and you are not listening and you are going towards the right, how is all this problem going to be solved? People say, oh, I've been praying to God for a long time. I haven't, nothing is happening. I'm asking God for a child. It's not happening. I'm asking God for promotion at work. It's not happening. I'm asking God for this. I'm asking God for that. God Almighty is not going to come down from heaven to sort these things out for you. God will always direct you through your garden angel or through your spirit guide. There's guidance. And if your issue requires an, an, an archangel to sort it, God will send that archangel to sort it. But you are not listening. You are not watching. You are, you are not aware. You see, you're not aware. The technology has taken over everything. People sit down. They go on YouTube. They go on Facebook. They go on Instagram, Twitter. That's all. Even when they wake up in the morning, the first thing they do is they, they grab the phone and they start checking. That early morning is the best time. Your body has calmed down. You've slept. Then that is the time to talk to God. That is the time to receive answers. That's the time. You see? Try to listen while you are waiting. And stop complaining. Stop saying it's never going to happen. It's too good to be true. It's that. God can never talk to you. God can never do this. God talks to us. Yes, he does. In the olden days, during the Old Testament, people used to hear God's voice in the sky, just like that. They would hear God's voice. But after Christ came, all that changed. All that changed. God still talks to us because now he lives in us. He talks to us in our mind. He talks to us. We just have to listen. Unfortunately, we humans of this era, should I say this era? Yeah, we humans have a lot going on with us. Our minds are busy. You see, our minds are more busy than the motorway. More busy than the expressway. Our minds are it keeps throwing this, throwing that, throwing this, throwing that. And because of that, all the messages are down there in our mind. We can't, we can't get to them. But for you to get to those messages, you need to filter your mind. You need to declutter. Once you declutter your mind, you will start receiving God's message. It will start coming. And after decluttering, you still have to be able to know which one it's God's voice. Which one is, 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 is the enemy's voice? You see? That's why we have guides. We have spirit guides. You are free to ask any question and the answer will be given to you. You see? You need to declutter. You need to declutter your mind. And to declutter my, your mind, you have to get rid of fear first. Get rid of fear. Go, get rid of the mindset that uh, you are not good enough, that things, good things will never come to you, that God will never do this, God will never... No! Leave all those things that were planted in your head while you were growing up. You see? Leave all those things. Individually, you can talk to God and get your answers by yourself. You do not need a third party to do that. So, 
while you are waiting on God, do this, declutter your mind. Because sometimes, in many cases, if you are not getting any uh, uh, um, response from God for whatever you are asking for, it is you, it's the wall you put up. You see, it's this huge wall that's uh, blocking you from God. So you need to do what I've just said to you. Declutter your mind, filter what's in your mind so that you will be able to receive the true messages from God. And you will be able to receive messages from angels as well. So just, <clears throat> excuse me, just while you are waiting, do these things. Be aware of your environment. Be aware. When you go out, stop pimping, pimping, pimping pim, pim on phone, on laptop, on this, on tablet. No, do not. Because you need to concentrate. You need to know when, when you are receiving messages, you see. Because your angel will always direct your eyes to whatever it is. The angel will always make you hear what it is. Somebody might be chatting over the phone and just one sentence is the, the answer that you've been looking for. One sentence will open that door for you. One sentence from that person will open the door for you. You see? So that is what I have to say. The, the uh, praying, talking, and chatting with God is the first season. The second season is the waiting. And during that waiting, you really need to have patience. And while you are waiting... Try to understand what's going on around you. Try to understand what is coming into your head. Try to understand your dream. Sometimes the answer is in your dream. You see, try to understand everything. When you understand, then you will know what God wants you to do. You see, you will know. Sometimes you need help and you are out there pressing your phone. And that person that's supposed to help you is there watching you and there's no eye contact there's no eye contact because you're busy with your phone and that person will just go by you see that person will go by you are the one that needs help from god so you need to be aware of your environment there are people who come to you there are angels who come to you in form of human beings to help you, you see there are angels who come to you. It might be just having a conversation with you. And from there, you just see that, yes, this answer you've been waiting for a long time. This is it. You see? You just say, oh, so this is what I'm supposed to do. You understand? To solve the issue. And the next one, when it comes, is the harvesting. Time to harvest all these things. You, when you get all those things and you are happy, then don't forget all the promises you made because a lot of people, when they want stuff from God, they promise that they will turn mountains to flat ground. They promise that they, they will turn ocean to, 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 to uh, dry land. They promise things that they cannot fulfill because they want help from God. God Almighty knows this. He will still do those things for you. But don't think that it's because you said you will turn a mountain to a flat ground or you turn an ocean to, to ordinary ground that God did it for you. God knows you will not fulfill it. But when you get all those things, try to help other people as well. You see? Try to help other people. And that is your way of showing gratitude to God, which is the fourth season I'm talking about. Time for showing gratitude. It doesn't end in, oh, God, thank you. God, thank you. God, thank you. I'm very grateful. It doesn't end like that because there are people who need help. The way God has sent uh, somebody to help you directly or indirectly is the way you have to help somebody else. You need to help other people as well. A lot of people need your help. So that, that will be your way of showing gratitude to God. You, you do things for others. Some people, as soon as God does stuff for them, they forget. There's no gratitude, nothing. They think is by their own power. They think is by their own doing that they got all, all, all they have. You see? Whether you worked hard to get it or not, 
whether you got it easily, it's still by God's grace. You see, by God's favor. So you have to be grateful. And to be grateful, you help other people that need help. A lot of people need help. There are so many uh, 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 homeless people about. There are people who don't even have money to change their clothes. When you see them, there are holes in their shoes. There are holes in their trousers, their skirts. There are people who need your help. There are people who sleep under the bridge somewhere. You see? There are people who sleep in the open when it's raining. They don't have any shelter. There are people you need to help one way or the other. You see? You need to help people. So that's what I want to talk about in this video. If you are waiting on God, you are sometimes the person, sometimes you are the one that is um, blocking your harvesting. You see, sometimes you are the one blocking your harvest. When you look at the way you, 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 you behave during the waiting period, sometimes you are the one blocking it. So... Look into whatever it is that is going on with you. After you've talked to God and you are waiting, be aware. Be aware because answers will come to you. What you have to do will come to you. So that, that is listening for answers from God. You listen. You see, listen. And when you've received everything, do not forget to show gratitude to God. Showing gratitude is not when you take 10% of whatever it is. If it's money, if it's whatever. People give 10% of whatever to, to the church. That is not it. The 10% you give, is you, you call it tithes. When you could help people out there suffering. These pastors do not use this money to help people. In fact, when you check people that go, uh, that, that, that go to, that attend um, church service in every church, you will see that 70% of them are very poor. 70% have no idea where they will get money to feed themselves or their families. 70% of them has no job. Yet, they will take 10% 10, 10 of whatever they get. When you give somebody money now and say, take this money, go and look after your family. He will take 10% and go and give to the church. And that is wrong. You have no job. You have no business. You have no income. So, where is this 10% coming from? Why are you giving 10% of nothing? It's not right. So, uh, when you receive your blessing, do not forget those that need help. If it is not money, you are looking for a child and God gives you a child. Put in a service to somebody, somebody that needs your help. Whether it's advice, whether it's, you know, even something as simple as a smile, you know. Something as simple as a smile can make somebody happy, make somebody feel good. You see, everything is not about money. It's not about money. So be grateful. Be grateful when you receive the blessing. And that's all I have to say. Thank you for watching and see you guys in my next video. God Almighty will meet you at your point of need. Those of you waiting on God, God Almighty will meet you at a point of need. Okay, thank you for watching my video. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. Turn on your notification bell if you want notification. If you want to be notified when I put up a video, <laughs> turn on the notification bell and try to mm, like my video. Like my video, okay? Talk to you guys in my next video. See ya. God bless you.